All right, so it's about time I make this video. I get asked all the time, what is a machine learning infrastructure engineer? Primarily because in my Twitch bio, you can see I have, hey, I work at Twitch as an ML infrastructure engineer and a bunch of other stuff. And people all the time ask me, well, what is that? Can you explain it? And yes, and here's the video that does that. So I want to first state that different companies have different definitions of what a machine learning engineer really means. And I'm going to start off with company A, which could be similar to Twitch because, you know, that's kind of what I know what Twitch does here. And so in company A or companies that follow this kind of pattern, there is basically two roles. There's the machine learning engineer and then there is called the scientist or applied scientist. And I want to make a distinction. This is not a data scientist. This is literally called an applied scientist or a research scientist. And the way company A splits the role of machine learning is the machine learning engineer is not responsible for creating the machine learning model. Their focus is primarily on deploying the model and the infrastructure surrounding what it means to deploy that model or even the service that's going to use that model. So a good way to think about it is like it's a specific software engineering rule, but uses different and particular technologies to achieve their job. A lot of the things that we have to ask ourselves is scale, reliability, fallbacks, right? So let's say if the model goes haywire or the model is down, what's our fallback mechanism? How do we handle scale? What if a different version of the model Model gets deployed that's actually worse than the previous version. So we use stuff like canary deployment environments, but I don't want to get too into the details. One thing I tell people to ask themselves about what it is to be a machine learning engineer or what I do for my job is how can we use this model in production or how can this model have an impact? And so all because applied scientists create this really cool machine learning model that's very sexy and cool and whatever, if it's not good for the business, so if it's not either making money or saving money or saving time, it's kind of useless. And a lot of the, these aspects of machine learning are luxury things. So a lot of the time, companies that want to make more money will find ways to implement machine learning models to squeeze out more revenue or whatever it is that they want to solve. And then we have company B or companies that follow the pattern of B where there is no kind of separation between scientists. It's just the machine learning engineering role. And this is basically one role that is the scientist and the engineer. So they're responsible for training the model, creating the model, you know, the data pipeline, and deploying it and doing the things that we just talked about before. So this is, you know, is it a better SWE or is there a better uh, individual can make better models? And that's kind of where that line is just blurred. You don't know if you're going to have a strong scientist who's really good at training models or you're going to have a good software engineer who's just really crafty with deploying software and making good software. So for me, I fall into company A. There, I work very closely with different applied scientists at Twitch and we solve different problems. We work with different services. We use machine learning models to distinguish between different users for particular use cases. We use machine learning models for prevention methods and all these other things. I can't really go into detail, but we use them in all across Twitch. And some technologies that are very common in different machine learning engineering roles, regardless of the company, would be something like Amazon SageMaker, AWS SageMaker. Build, train, deploy machine learning models for any use case with fully managed infrastructure, tools, and workflow. SageMaker is kind of like a beast when it comes to like AWS, it's kind of a go-to. You get to have different processing jobs, different ways to store your ML model, different ways to inference your ML model. So SageMaker is definitely a good tool. Another one is Apache Airflow and the Apache Airflow is typically used for ETL jobs or even glue jobs or anything like that, where you have a pipeline that you need to train your model or, you know, extract different data lakes or databases for training data. Apache Airflow is a good way to schedule it on a cron and, you know, once a week or daily, you can retrain your model and do different deployments. Or even if you're doing a batch model system, you can get inferences on your model and then they'll be readily available for inference. And I can have a different video where I talk about different batch systems versus real time systems. If you're interested and if you are, leave a comment below asking you want to watch that video and I'll gladly make it. Another popular kind of resource is the hugging face 
technology where, you know, Hugging Faces exploded. They have data sets of different models, LLM models, even XGBoost models, linear models, statistical models, uh, shallow neural networks, deep neural networks. I mean, they really have it all. It's kind of like this hub, this marketplace of different models that you can use. When I worked at a startup prior to Twitch, we used Hugging Face quite a lot, but moving towards I don't think there's a lot of, you know, big companies that choose not to use their own made model using the own data they have available, but I definitely see the appeal of using an already pre-trained model and maybe having some different methods of retraining it. On the topic of different models, I know a lot of people are talking with AI and the AI hype via Microsoft, Nvidia, Apple, whatever it is, ChatGPT. And I just wanna let you know, like a lot of the times these deep LLMs are very, very useful as we've seen, but a lot of companies are still very comfortable with using something called XGBoost, which in my opinion is one of the best ML methods or models that you can do. And let me just read it. XGBoost is an optimized distributed gradient boosting library designed to be highly efficient, flexible, and portable. It implements machine learning algorithms under the gradient boosting framework. XGBoost provides a parallel tree boosting also known as GBDT, GBM, that solves many data science problems in a fast and accurate way. This is kind of like a bread and butter, really good way to benchmark. Is it actually worth the investment for a deep neural network or even LLM uh, versus an XGBoost? Because an XGBoost a lot of time has very, very good results depending on the training data. And then lastly, convolutional neural networks. These are obviously very popular, very you know, deep neural networks were very popular right before the time OpenAI got really, really big. So like 2021, even before that 2020. And if you're interested, there's a book called deeplearningbook.org. It's free. This would be in the description. Don't even worry about it. But this is kind of like the holy Bible when it comes to deep neural networks. It may be out of date, I will admit, because of how fast this particular genre of tech have moved. But I think it's a really good book to really establish yourself on different technologies, terminologies, and how we even got to the point of where we are with LLMs. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section below. Did I miss anything? Do you have any more questions? Did you want to see that batch versus real-time video I talked about earlier? And as always, please comment, like, and subscribe. But I will see you in the next one.